Well, not as a result of COVID, but uh, Tony Storm is gone. Yeah, she so she worked last night in um, was it Washington D.C. three way with Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks. Supposed to be in Baltimore tonight. That is a very short drive by wrestler standards, and I guess I don't know if she said it last night or she woke up in the morning, but she decided that. She was uh, Jack Briscoe, if you know the story. It's sort of like, except there was no blizzard. Or maybe there was. I don't know what this weather was like, but it was, uh, they're just on the road. And then one day, they're, they're at the airport, and it's snowing. And Jack Briscoe tells Jerry Briscoe, this is like in 84, 85. I think it might have been 80, the end of 84. And just goes, see that jet going south? He goes, yeah, I goes, I'm on the next one. See ya. And that was the end. And he never wrestled again. I don't know what's going to happen with Tony Storm, but um, she quit. They gave her her release. Um, the big question is, is what does that exactly mean? Did they put it when, when they agreed to give her release? Did they put restrictions in? Um, because very often if someone would do this, they would not give them the release and they would just tell them, you know, you got to. You know, stay as many, you know, many people have. I mean, you can quit. You can always quit your job, but they can hold you and, um, you know, they can hold you and they can suspend you for not going to work while keeping you under a contract and not be able to go anywhere else. They did release her, so they did not do that. Did they release her with a provision that she can't go to AEW? That I can't tell you. Did they release her with a provision she can't go to Japan? I would think for sure they didn't because they wouldn't care about that. So, um, you know, as far as her reasons and why she left, the only thing I heard was, you know, burnout, essentially. Um, you know, I heard from some people there, and, you know, there was some, you know, I mean, kind of the feeling that if you watch the buildup of her in the Charlotte Flair feud and you're kind of like you know you'd probably if you were her and you think about your job as opposed to just do your job you'd probably ask a lot of questions you know like why did i get a pie thrown in my face twice when i'm the baby face and the pies usually go and even though she did get the revenge um you know why when you're building up the big match do i get my ass kicked and lo and win by disqualification why did i not win um, that match and it's just like well, that's just how, you know, I mean it's it's the 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 one thing with WWE is that um, You know, th they're about feeding their top stars. They have their protected stars You know, they say they're not they they're not trying to build stars, but the reality is they're only trying to build a few stars and Charlotte Flair is one of those stars and Tony Storm isn't so it's all about instead of when building these matches up, similarly with Liv Morgan and, and Becky Lynch, you know, normally you would, the, the, the if you got a weak challenger in the sense that the challenger is not nearly the star the champion is, you overcompensate by really shining the weak challenger to make them a strong challenger. That's just typical logical booking. But here they don't. They just continue to, you know, not do it that way because they're trying to protect the stars that are already made and they're already stars. You know, you see it up and down with the, with their favorite their favorite people, and you know, I don't know if that's got something to do with it, but you know, Tony Storm did spend years in Japan where they um, book differently. Let's just say um, they build. You know, you know, so so. Um, that that could be part of it. Perhaps she'll say something. Um, there's probably a 90-day non-compete uh, involved under any circumstance. But as far as obviously, I would if you're AEW, she you know like there's always debates on who do you take and who do you not take. And to me, she's a no-brainer. You know, you would take her for sure. She's a good wrestler. You know, good look, underutilized, and people know it. And she could help that women's division. Whether she can go there, and that was part of the deal, is you can't go there. I don't know that. I don't know if she, they, they, they just said, you can go, 90 days, do whatever you want. Or they put provisions on, because they had her by the ball, so to speak, because, you know, it's she's got an existing, unless her contract was coming due, which in which case then, you know, 
then she probably could just go and you know after the 90 days or whatever or whatever the period is but um yeah so so as far as i'm still trying to find out what's the rest of the story with her but uh she's gone um out of nowhere hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.